Good afternoon. As Prena already said, I'm Martin. My surname is Welbergen. We Dutch always speak with a lot of uh, the actually throw sound. So it's difficult to, uh, to remember perhaps, but uh, that will come later. Uh, I'm an artist, professional artist, uh, and I travel between Holland and Czech Republic. Uh, in Holland, I have my studio in Amsterdam, but at the moment I'm in Czech Republic, so I don't have a studio because my studio is the open nature. Because when I'm here in the summertime, I go out, especially with uh, watercolor, to uh, do my work. So I uh, change my uh, studio for natural scenes. Uh, I'm here already for a month, so I did quite some watercolor uh, landscapes because for me, watercolor and landscapes are actually together. So I hardly paint watercolor in my studio because then I paint with oil paint uh, and other paints, but not so much I use watercolor because it's especially, I think, a technique for the, when you go outside is light. You don't have to carry so much. Uh, it is, of course, by uh, the air, it dries quickly. And it's a beautiful technique, although it's difficult. It's a beautiful technique to do that outside. I will show you a few works I did till now. Uh, the space, uh, the, the, the part of Czech Republic I'm in. This is uh, a landscape I did with uh, two towers at the end, not the twin towers, but the Trotsky towers. Uh, so I did that a plein air, so as, the, as the French say. Um, and did, I did yesterday that you have here a lot of rocks and I love rock painting. Uh, I was sitting in the middle of the forest. It was quite cool. It was also a bit damp and that has an influence on your uh, watercolor. Not always negative, but it's better to have dry weather. And then I will show the last one. This is the same two towers because I live nearby and I want to make a uh, hundred views of Mount Trotsky. So I already have 10, so I have a lot to go. Good. So then you know a little bit how I work and Perna sent you my website. If you like to look to it, then you see all kinds of things I do, like portraits, landscapes, still lives, and so whatever you want in the Western traditional style. Good. Uh, we start with the watercolor. With watercolor, you need water, clean water. So be careful, take it from the tap, not from some river, because that will be dirt in and that will discolor your watercolor. Important. Another thing which is important is your watercolor pad, as you see here. I already did something just to introduce you later. Uh, it's important to have good paper. Good paper. And sometimes, I don't know where you live, but it's sometimes difficult to get. Uh, the best paper you can get is 100% cotton. Uh, and it's about 300, 400 grams. I mean, if you have the right watercolor paper, you can do a lot. If you have not such a good paper, you can paint watercolor, no problem. Although it is, because you use quite some water, the sucking in of the water, the absorption is less when you have cheap paper. You see, that's why cotton is the best. But nowadays, and that's perhaps more for the regions, uh, perhaps where you live, like India, you have bamboo paper. I use bamboo paper. Uh, I love that. Bamboo paper, it's a new kind of paper uh, and it's very good for watercolor. You can use it for many things. Bamboo is now completely in fashion. You can buy everything in bamboo, even your underwear if you like, but the paper is quite good. So I use that for about 300 grams. I have it on a block. I have different sizes so I can carry that easy with me. So the paper is an important thing. Then we come to the brushes, which are also, uh, yeah, that are, those are your tools. Uh, you have to move with your brush, and that's the most difficult part, of course. Uh, I have different brushes. I always take this with me, and there are a lot of brushes in, because I don't use them all, but you never know what you're going to do. So, to start with, 
are these brushes and they are of artificial hair which is very good for animal welfare it's a uh, specially made it's a kind of nylon but then yeah in such a way they manufacture it that it is good for water color because it's important that you get a point and you get a belly you see that's important also this metal tube which hold the hairs together is also important that it's one hole but you have to get into the water and then it sucks up the water with your color and the reservoir which is the belly is important that it don't go immediately down because then you have to fill your color all the time so you can buy them in different uh, uh, price levels of course it, is, it can be very pricey but it can also be reasonably payable then i have a squirrel brush that is made from squirrel hair and that's not so kind for your uh, animal welfare but it's a beautiful brush it's more like the japanese chinese uh, it's a hair which not really is uh, coming back to the same part but it gives you also possibilities so the squirrel hair is one part and then you get the most expensive ones and that is sable hair sable hair is actually the best this comes from the tails of the saber saber and um it is so made that the reservoir in the point will always be in the right position so it, the hairs always come back after you use it uh, these can be very pricey especially if you take the kolinsky brushes uh, when you start water watercolor painting i should not advise you to buy these things immediately because yeah they can go up in quite a price so that is not what you should use okay then another thing of course because without you can you can play with water but not with color that is a good watercolor box also that you can buy in different price classes of course it has to do with the the vibrancy and the steadiness of the colors um, and you have all kinds of different uh, uh, companies who make them but to have a box like this you don't have to take so many uh, because you are in the end you use you don't use them all i'm there yeah i'm there um, so this is an important thing that you have your good colors with you and you see i use it and i leave also my colors sometimes dried up on my palette so it's easy with a bit of a little bit of clean water you can uh, make it uh, fluid again you can use the same color and your palette is already done so i i walk i walk outside a lot of greens but also a lot of purples and i have them already a little bit on my palette so that's an important thing and another thing is of course you have to have a steady cup to put your water in uh, and uh, yeah after a while that's your extra water especially if you go outside you can't easily get clean water uh, so uh, after a while it gets of course colored your water and it can also disturb the, the the brightness of the color so you have to refill it with clean water but steady cup is important to take with you and then at the last moment the last thing is a scrap of paper just ordinary paper because if you mix your colors on the palette um, it you never know what is inside the brush so it can be too colorful or not enough so it's always good if you mix your colors on the palette that you will um, look first what is the strength of the color and it's always the best thing to start your watercolor light so you go don't go immediately for the bright yellow or the deep red no you go for the soft yellow the pink uh, and you will uh, build it up layer by layer yeah so it's also a uh, drying time in between and then you can have a smoke or you can have a drink or some coffee uh, but it has to dry because otherwise you get strange spots so you don't want that so a scrap of paper is important that you can use okay i will place my palette at the other side so that you people can see it 
what I do, if you can see it, but otherwise I will hold it up. Uh, usually I have a table with me when I'm outside, so I can put it up and then I'm easy, I can easily reach it. Um, good. Now, if you look to my uh, tab, you see I already started a little bit, just to be prepared. Uh, and I always start with a uh, uh, outline drawing, very lightly, with pencil. Yeah, so you, you need to have a pencil. You don't have to do it, but if your uh, composition is complicated, it's better to make an, an outline drawing before you start painting. Um, what you also see in this drawing uh, is that I already put a little bit blue-gray on the shady parts. I always start like that. Because if you are outside, light always change. And uh, if you start, it's better to put first light and dark in such a way that you say, okay, that was the moment I started. Colors, well, they become even more beautiful in the afternoon because then the sun is on its brightest and you see so many colors in nature and also a little bit in this still life. So start with the shades, that's important. And you can use a, a, a gray, a blue, you can even use a slight of purple. That doesn't really matter, it depends how you want to work. Okay, I place it here again so that everybody can see it. I have to move about. So what we are going to do now is put my water here. I mix what you can see probably a little bit of pinkish red. Yeah. And not too little because probably you have to use it more. I try it out on my scrap of paper. I think, well, it's a good start. Fill your brush well. And then you look to your still life. That's important. That's the thing you are going to paint. So you start to analyze the colors. And you see, especially in this, uh, in this melon, you see very light pink and you see deep red. Yeah? Okay, you don't do that immediately. You see also a lot of brown blackish pits in there, but that comes all later. So what you start with is the light part. So I filled my brush and now it comes, of course, important thing, I have to sit in a proper way in front of it, otherwise I can't manage. And I start, here you see as a light part, and I start to bring in the layer of reddish. on that part, very lightly, not too much. It's important to spare out, of course, the ones which are a different color or even which uh, are lighter. So I go all over it. I have my tissue, I didn't tell you about that. And that is to make it softer. So a tissue with you is also a good thing to have. And you slowly, but not too slowly, you bring your color on the part you wanted. So it is not important to do it precisely because you see there is a lot of difference in color. So a little bit of playfulness is not bad at all. And use your point, eh? if you come to a part very small in some corner, then you have to uh, use the point of your brush. If you go for a flat part, use the belly of the brush, important thing. And then you can slowly with your tissue, you can play a little bit that it won't be too sharp on the edges where you have a different color. You see that's greenish yellowish there and you don't want to have too much red. We have another red piece, so we continue. Yeah, first you do in layers, so you do all the parts you need. And that, that I have to go for the right position. It's an important thing, I bring it in here. And then I go slowly towards the side. 
always keep on watching your still life because yeah, before you know, you lose track. And then you're going too far. And that's not what you want. If you go too far like I did, you just do this. And it's gone. You see? Oh, here. Swatch. You do this. And it's gone. So don't be afraid. You can always remove your paint if it's still fresh. Also here on the side, which is a bit blurred, you can put some of... You need a lot of tissues also to dry your brush. You see, it's because usually I have my pad flat on my lap, like a laptop. Uh, but now I have to show you guys how to do it. So I have to put it in such a way so the paint, because it's water, it's slowly going down. And that can be uh, a nuisance. But then you have the way to remove it. Okay, you see also that I went a little bit too far in the knife. Uh, and you see with clean water, if you can follow me, you can easily erase it. It's a kind of eraser. So, and then you have to dry. It's important always to have patience with this uh, uh, watercolor. If you don't have patience, you should not start with watercolor. Because it needs the time to dry, because we are going to do layer upon layer. There is a difference in uh, uh, if you are outside, it's a sunny day. Well, then it dries very quickly. You have to work very fast. Otherwise, uh, so such a big part, already it's going to dry. And that can be very annoying if you don't want it. But if it's a bit damp, okay, then you just can uh, uh, let it go a little bit. Uh, and it will... Uh, the water, the watercolor will suck in slowly and it keeps more wet. So you can do more things when it's more of a damp like day. Okay, so that's important. I did the first part. Hmm. Uh, Martin? Yeah. Can we stop you for a minute? Yeah, you can. Yeah, okay. Can so, I get paint? Sure. I have a feeling that uh, if someone is trying, they would not have the drawing ready with them. Uh, so why don't we take one quick turn with the attendees, asking them what are they up to? Are they also drawing during the session? And so just uh, their introduction. So we also get to know uh, where are these people joining from and what's their expectation level. Okay, that's fine. So I will wait. Um, and you want me to tell what they use for uh, drawing or? Uh, no. Uh, you, no, not, you have to go the way you are going and you're doing a great job indeed and uh, we're liking your session. Only thing is uh, we want to speak to our attendees in the middle so we get get some idea where they are. You know, it's, it's just a check-in with everyone. That's fine. Once. I wait for a moment. I will mix my colors. Yeah, great. Okay. Um, all right. So, uh, Mo, do you want to take up and ask our attendees uh, if they can provide a quick introduction of themselves. Uh, and even before you go uh, move uh, start, I just have one suggestion for everyone who is attending the session. Uh, so if you go to Martin's uh, screen, uh, there is an option to pin. If you pin him, then you can see his screen uh, on your full screen. So you can just focus on his work in that way and you don't have to see everyone else's screen then. So just a suggestion uh, to to get more a better experience here. Uh, Mo, please take up from here. Oh, okay. Thank you. Hi, everyone. I hope we are enjoying ourselves so far. I've been trying to follow up with um, Martin, and it's been quite exciting. So quickly, we'd like to... Hi, hi, Martin. Well done. We'd like to get to know you briefly. Okay, so I'll just call you. If you don't mind, I'd like you to unmute yourself and introduce yourself. So I'll just call us randomly. Shama. Shama Mahesh, can you please introduce yourself? Can we meet you? 
Hi. Quickly. Uh, hi, my name is Shama. Uh, I... I'm I live in Bangalore, India. I'm a friend of Prerna's. I've known her for many years now, um, and uh, I, I've I've heard about all the the all her uh, um, adventures of quitting her corporate illustrious corporate career, pursuing art, and she's always fascinated and inspired me in terms of the courage that she has to follow what she wants. And when I saw this up saw this on Facebook, I thought it'd be a great idea for me to get introduced to watercolors and learn from the best. So I'm here today. I'm trying to see if I can get to paint, but then I saw Martin's uh, artwork and I realized that I shouldn't. So I learn, take tips, write down, and maybe someday try. <laughs> uh, okay. Shama, maybe in your next session, then. Hopefully so. Let's see. <laughs> okay, Shama. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. We are pleased to meet you. Now, Ami, Ami, can we meet you? Are you there? Ami, are you there? Hi, everyone. Hi, Ami. Hi, Ami. Um, Hello. Uh, so, uh, my name is Ami, and I'm uh, logging in from Mumbai, India. Um, so, I came across this email uh, in my uh, account. Uh, from Meetup, uh, and uh, that's where I came to know that there is a session happening, uh, a live session uh, in, in, in terms of an introduction to watercolors. So I like coloring okay. and I like painting, so I thought this would be an interesting session to uh, learn the basics, I believe. So I'm currently not painting, but I am listening to Martin and I'm observing how he's exactly painting and uh, taking tips from him. That's You're good, welcome. Ami. Thank, thank you. Thank you for coming. You're welcome. Okay. Thank you. Anab. You're welcome, Ami. Anab, can we meet you? Yes, yeah, sure. Hi, this Hello, is Anab. Anab. Yeah. Yeah, nice to uh, nice to meet you guys. Um, thanks Martin for um, uh, for letting us uh, share your knowledge. And uh, so basically I'm interested in uh, like in this covid times so I'm interested in knowing about the art forms to reignite my or renew my passion for uh, art and just uh, understand and uh, some uh, reject some old memories as well as uh, learn the techniques in a better way so love to meet you all thank you thank you so much ami ami thanks sorry <laughs> thank you so much uh, um shama can i meet you okay i think we've met shama Hey, yes, yeah. so I've already introduced myself, but hi again. Okay, yes, yes. Sorry, Shama. Kathika, can we meet you? Yeah. Hi, everyone. This is Kathika. Hi, Kathika. Hi. I recently hi. Yeah, in Meetup and Saris, can you hear me? Yes, I, I can. Yeah, okay. So, uh, actually, I am a beginner. And I like painting and coloring too. So I want to take some tips from Martin. Yeah. Where are you Thank from? Thank you. Uh, yeah, I come from Bangalore. Okay. Thank you. We are we are happy to have you here. We are happy to have you. We hope you learn from this session. Priyanka, can we meet you? Hi, just a second. Sorry. So, uh, hi. hi, hi, Mo. Hi, Priyanka. Hi. I am Priyanka. I'm from India. I also live in Germany, but at the moment I'm stuck in India due to COVID. Uh, uh, this is my first time ever painting. And fortunately, I had some stuff of my sister, which I'm using. I am for the first time painting, and this is what I've done so far, Martin. I don't know how it looks, but I just thought <laughs> there's, no, <laughs> there's no drawing as such. But I just thought since I have color, I just started like painting what I had in front of me. A uh, wonderful session, and I have I'm having a lot of fun. I know for sure I'm going to come for the next session because what I've started, I would like to finish it for sure. And yeah, I think that's what I aim for now. And I'm enjoying it a lot. Thank you so much. Thank you, Priyanka. We're glad to have you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, 
Shri Hari. I'm sorry if I didn't get that right. Shri Hari, are you there? My name is Meda. I'm from Bangalore. I like painting and arts. Um, so for, for now, I'm just watching. Okay. That's fine. Thank you so much. We are happy to have you, and that's very fine. Okay, and then I have one last person. I don't know if that's your real name, but it says Sim C E. Is that is that your real name? Can you introduce yourself, please? Can we meet you? If you are not, if you have not introduced yourself, can you introduce yourself, please? There's one more person. Are you there? Okay. I think we can hand over to Martin now to continue. Yep. Uh, just, just before uh, we start with Martin again, uh, last thing I would like to tell everyone, we will also have his recording and we'll share that with you afterwards so you can practice later at your home. Wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> All right, thanks Martin. Okay, you can shall I continue? Good. Yeah. Well, in the meantime, uh, the red has uh, uh, been drying, so that's good. If you want to know for sure if it is all right, you use the, the back of your hand and you just go gently on top and you feel if it's cold or a bit damp, then you know it still perhaps needs some time of drying. But I think we can, without problems, start with the next one. We can choose whatever we like. We can take the lemon, which is a bright yellow, although we don't start with bright yellow, we do it slightly in a lighter part, and we see an apple. The difference between the apple and the lemon is, of course, one thing to shape, but they are all a bit like uh, oval. But you see, the skin of a lemon is shiny. Yeah? That is, uh, this white, what you see, very light, shiny from uh, the light outside. And the apple has also a point which is shiny, but less. Yeah? And there are two different techniques to get that. So I should start with the apple. And I'm going to mix first the color. When you use the, 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 the what do you call them, the uh, naps, then it takes some time before uh, it gets to the uh, a little bit uh, uh, liquid. So you have to take some, but after a while it's liquid, then you have to be careful because for, before you know, you take too much. So always water it down in the beginning, try it out. And you see it is a bit of a green and golden delicious, as they call it. It is a yellow greenish apple. So uh, it's build up. If you analyze the color, you see there's a bit of yellow and it has also comparison with lemon, but you see it's also greenish and that sticks out uh, towards uh, or opposite to the uh, red of the melon. Okay, also for here you take enough uh, watercolor and you take your, always your tissue in your hand. You never know when you need it. So keep it in your hand and you're going to bring in very lightly this yellowish color. You can go over the shady parts because it's dry and that gives you immediately a kind of shade color, what you need. So, Just bring it down, and now you want to have uh, slightly this um, this greening part. You put your tissue just there, and if you look carefully, you see it's lighter, this part. I will show you that in the middle, you see it's a whitish part. You can very nicely do that with your tissue, as long as it's wet. If it's dry again, it doesn't work, but there is another method uh, but that will be in another session. Okay, well, in, in principle, you can also continue with your lemon because it is the same kind of color. It's only that it should not be too green because otherwise you get a bit similar. 
color. And that's not what you want because you want to make a lemon tryout. And then we go to the lemon. As you see, it's slightly lighter. Where the light part is, you will try to keep that white. That is, of course, the difficulty of watercoloring is to spare out the light parts. Always use your, your tissue if you go too far. Look carefully to your still life. If you, if you have too much color and it's sucking, it's going down, you go with a little bit dry brush over it and you let it slowly dry. It's important you can go over it just a few times, but don't continue too much. Because if you do that too rough and too much, you go over it all the time, all the time, because you are a bit uh, hesitant. Is it, did, did it work well? Um, the point is that um, your paper gets loose because it gets wet. And then you go with the brush, the brush, it's like sandpaper. So you, you get all these little bits of paper and that's not nice. So you should not go, you should make one layer and then let it dry. You can always, if you did a mistake, when you get darker, you can well, camouflage your mistake, you can say. Good. So I did now these parts. You see the red, you see the greenish yellow, and you see more the bright yellow. Now, now we go over to the next part. Uh, it has to dry first, so it, it again needs some time, but we can do some other parts. We go to the green part, and you see the green of the, the peel, uh, the outside of the melon is partly yellowish. Yeah, there you have it again, the, the connection between these two fruits and the skin of the melon. You see it's partly yellowish. So you can do two things. You can start with the yellow, that's one thing, or you can try to uh, play a little bit. So I go for the more uh, exciting part, and that is to use the yeah, and that is that I will spare it out a little bit here. I start with the yellow, of the, the, the green part. I go here further. Bit of play. Never too anxious, because then it doesn't work. And you can take then, for instance, another brush. And you can take your yellow, what you have still here. And you can put it a little bit in between. So that you get this, yeah, these spots of yellow. Look carefully, you can see there is a difference. And of course, it has to be dried. Be careful which brush you take because after a while you have so many brushes that you don't know which is which. So be careful that you always know where you are. Now, that green part should also be here. So I start to bring the green at the outer part of my melon. And I also see a darker part here in between. There you see it's going to flame, as they call, put your tissue on top and you see it's over. So if it starts, so if it's still wet, and you want to continue with a different color, uh, it can go into each other. That can be a technique. Some watercolors, colorists, they like to splash around a lot so that you get these kind of flame-like situations. That's the wet technique. What I do is the dry technique. So I wait layer by layer and sometimes I play a little bit like you see in the skin and then it blurs together and I can paint over it later. So if that happens, don't worry, use your tissue, that's why you have that always by hand. Uh, and if it's sucked full with color, you take a new one, yeah, you have to take it up with you, that you understand. Okay, well, I did that bit, so that is quite all right. We can look for the red. Is it coming back already? Is it already a little bit dry? I think so. So I take my brush with red. I will mix again 
my reddish color, I take a little bit more stronger red, a more bright red. And you see here is a darker part and here too. So I start with this one and I will play a little bit to bring that Do I need my tissue? No, I don't think so. I don't think so. It will go nicely. Suck it up a little bit in your dry brush so that it will not become a, yeah, a drip of paint. That's not so nice. You don't want that. If you want to blur it, you take a clean brush and still wet. You see, you can blur it a little bit by going along the edges. So, that same thing we can do with this part. Be careful, spare out your knife, otherwise everything gets red and then it becomes one red painting. Who is afraid of red, yellow, and blue? But that's abstract art, and we are not into abstract art. So keep it from each other. So you see, I get now a shady part, which is deeper red, and I leave out a little bit. Because what is watercolor? It's about the, 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 the depths of color, you know? So the way you use your brush, which should be playful, let the brush does it work? Don't push it, don't go on to it, let it flow because the brush will bring you to the right uh, uh, solution. Uh, and then you leave it because if you go in there again, then it will be completely blurred and not nice. So a little bit of playfulness in the water spots, that's what you need. And then you can go a little bit on the sides because you see there is a little bit of dark there underneath, you see a little bit. Be careful for the knife and the lemon. And you go around the apple. Let it go, let it go. I sound like Bob Ross. And then we spare out nicely the apple. You see here where the pits are, deeper reddish parts. Yeah, you can just, you don't have to take a ruler and see how far they are from each other. No, just at random. I mean, it's nature. That's the nice thing of nature. Nothing is calculated. Everything is by, no, not by chance. It's of course a structure, but it's not so if you are going to make a house, for instance, in perspective. Yeah, that's a different matter. So, okay. And then you can a little bit do with your tissue so that it will be softer. That's perhaps nice. I see here also in this part, I see some darker parts. So I go a little bit with my brush. And you see, now you get an idea of the, the, the depths of color, watercolor on the melon. You see, that's what you want to have. Good. Now, Again, we have to wait uh, because it's so near to each other before you know, yeah, it can blur. But you see, there is at this part, uh, you see that there is some uh, yellowish, greenish part. A little bit more here. Uh -huh. So flows over. So then I have to see, this was my red brush. Should not use that now because I'm going to the greenish yellowish. This is my green and this is my, yeah, this was my green. So here, um, okay, a little bit greenish, very soft color. Always use your, before you start, always look carefully on the scrapped paper to see if it's not too much color because it's very subtle here. So what you want is just a little bit of greenish. 
yellowish parts also here. And on top, very lightly. I hope you can see it. It's perhaps far away. But there's perhaps a, a technique to zoom in. I don't know how, because my skill is painting and not uh, IT. So, well, it's getting somewhere now. It's getting somewhere. Good. What shall we do next? This is dry. I think I will go for the lemon to make it nice, strong, yellowish. And I have to clean a little bit my palette because yeah, if the green goes through the yellow, then yeah, before you know, everything is the same color. So I clean it in my pot of water, not too much water otherwise. And then we go for the warm yellow, warm yellow. That is what we call lemon yellow. That's why it's called lemon yellow. And it's a bright, strong color. And that's why I'm going to now do it stronger. Because yeah, you can keep on doing very thin layers, but yeah, in the end, you get hungry because no meat, no fish, as we say in Holland. Although I'm a vegetarian, so for me it doesn't count, but it's a good proverb. And you see this, you know, the pores, you can say, of the skin, eh? that is like little dots. That's human beings, also little, little pores. And then we go to the side here. And it's becoming shiny. It's nice when you see this, this saturated color coming into being. I mean, watercolor should always be lighter than oil paint. With oil paint, you can go really for the deep colors because, yeah, that's into the, uh, you could say, into the paint, into the fabric of the paint. Watercolor, yeah. I like it more when it's slightly waterish. So don't go too dark in the color because also the, the, the water will not nicely flow. You get these this, this harsh parts in it and it should be fluid. If you look to a complete watercolor, it should, be, it should show the fluidness of the material. That is important. play a little bit with that yellow because it is also here and don't forget in the reflection of the apple you see also the yellow eh? because it's so bright this yellow that it it reflects in the greenish apple it almost gets orange but that is because there's also red in uh, the neighborhood which is from yeah. so you see you have the connection just play around not completely one big part, but just a little bit play with the brush and let it come to existence, I should say. Okay. Um, should I continue or are there any questions perhaps? Otherwise I continue because there's still a knife and there is a plate, so still some things to um, do. Sure, Martin, I, actually it's a good idea. We should uh, check in one, one more time with people. Um, uh, we can ask if someone has a question. Can you hear me, Martin? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, it's only okay. the sound outside. Um, they, so, it's um, Saturday, so people are mowing their grass fields. Uh, maybe I'll have Jennifer because she was uh, sending some messages to me. And Jennifer, uh, do you want to speak to Martin directly? She also joined in new, so you can introduce yourself also, Jennifer. Oh, okay. Uh, no, it's all right. I think everybody else is fine. So it's just only me. So it's just a suggestion for future if you have something the same. Uh, what is your suggestion, Jennifer? 
oh, I mean, if if the camera is above his piece of art, so that we can see his strokes as he explained, because now we we actually see the whole thing, the the fruits, his art and him, but it's not close enough to the art. I mean, that's for me. Uh, I think the rest do not have this problem. Then it's it's fine. Yeah, yeah the I see. The difficulty of this is that uh, I have my iPad, which is the camera. I have it on the easel, which hangs to the front. Otherwise, you won't see this part. I can only bring my watercolor when I have painted. I can bring it to you near uh, so that, that you can see what I de do. Uh, because, yeah, I can't do that while I'm working. You know, I can't hold the iPad and then work and look to my still eyes. <laughs> it becomes a bit complicated. But I show you every time I do something, I will bring it near to the camera and then you can see what happens. Is yeah, I understand. Idea? Yeah, sure, sure. No problem. It's just for your future one. If you have future classes, uh, you know, actually some of them, they use the phone so that you can mount it over your piece of work. Yeah. It's just a suggestion. It's fine. Thank you. That's a good suggestion. We, we will talk it over with prayer now for the next uh, session, if there is any next session. Yeah, thank you. Your uh, is very yes. nice. Uh, thank you, Jennifer. And Jennifer, I assume you're joining us from Singapore. Let us know. Sorry, I didn't get that. Are you joining us from Singapore? Yes, I am. I see. Great. All right. Thank you, Jennifer, for joining us. And uh, we'll look into the suggestion for our next session so we can improve on this. Um, other than this, does anyone have any question? I'm muting myself. And uh, anyone who has a question, just unmute and ask. I have a question, actually. Priyanka here. Yeah, Priyanka. Yes, so one second. All right. Uh, I'm not sure if you can see it, but this is what I tried. Yeah. And what I'm <laughs> struggling right now with so two questions. First question related to the 3D depth that you try to give in your watermelon. I think I have missed out the part where you were trying to describe that. What is it like different shades of red that you, I should be using? Because I have got two different colors, but it doesn't really have the depth. And second on the shine part of the lab, of the uh, apple actually. So uh, for that also, okay. So we have yellow and then we have shade of green. So, but I think what I have done is more like it's, it's like really, really green instead of shiny green. So if you could like suggest what, uh, how could have I, I would have done uh, it properly in case uh, to make it look uh, the way it is in on your canvas. Yes, yes. Well, what you see, and that is of course um, very uh, understandable, especially if you start, is that you want to go immediately for the strong color. So if you hear the word green, you look on your, uh, in your box to the most green part and then you put it quite strongly on your paper. Uh, and uh, the point is, if you look to my apple, it is greenish apple, but there is more yellow in it than green. And what you did was, it's a kind of unripe mango. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. All right. But that's because it's it's growing in your country, so perhaps you see that more than in Golden <laughs> Delicious. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I'm gonna try yeah. maybe. <laughs> Just continue. Okay. Just continue. It is always in the beginning. It is difficult to get. You know, watercolor is color and tonal value, and that is the most difficult part. You have the pure color in your box. As I showed you, pure color in your box, which is very attractive. And that's also the, the, the danger of it. It's very attractive. And you have to water it down. Because the, the colors in nature are mostly more subtle. You see, uh, only the, that's why I put a lemon in the middle. Uh, that is really what you can say, yellow. You know, that is yellow as you dream about it while the apple is greenish but it's not really green so yeah um, this is a very light yellowish greenish apple and it's lighter than the um, melon at the background which is of course red so the tonal difference are important to understand you have color 
at one hand and you have tone, the value of the color at the other. And you have to play with that by using water. And that's what you use with the scrap paper, what you have just to try out, don't start too strong in the color. Always start light. You have to find your way. Give yourself the chance to grow into your subject, to grow in the color you see. And everybody, of course, has different ideas about what a color is. If you are, uh, uh, let's say, a very active person, you like to see bright colors. If you are a very subdued person, you like more the subtle colors. That is a difference in expression. Yeah, so that is yeah, yeah. hopefully an answer for you. It does, it does. Makes a lot of sense. I, I think I got the point. Thank you so much. Good, super. Any other questions? No? Then I continue. Good. So, mostly the parts are painted. And now only the knife. If you look to the still life, you see there is a blackish handle and metal grayish, uh, what we say, uh, lemons. What do you say? Uh, that is the, 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 the cutting part. So uh, we can bring that now in because by the talk, the colors are sucked in. It's reasonably dry. So without any problems, we can start to do that part. Well, I already, for the shade I made here on the other palettes, sometimes it's good to have more palettes, I made already this bluish gray color to start the painting with, as I told you. And I will use that now for the metal part of the knife. Let's have a look if it is the right color I have. Yeah. And I go over it. Be careful for the lemon. Of a little bit of color in between doesn't really matter because everything has to do with reflections. The world is connected, you can say the colorful world is connections connected by uh, uh, color reflections. You saw that with the lemon in the apple and also the red, you can say, in uh, the connection with the lemon. Sometimes it depends how it is situated. So I put this knife in a very light grayish color and I can go over it here a little bit. So, and I forgot something else and that is part of the red of the, uh, the melon, which is underneath. See, when you the color is getting wet, it immediately gives a strong color. And I'm going to put it red here under the knife, like that. Suck it up a little bit. And you should tissue if it blurs too much into another color, like this. So, good. Martin, um, yeah. I'm allowed to ask yeah. a question. Um, yeah. So, um, what um, brushes or pencil um, or brushes are you you have uh, used now, and um, why you changed it? So, why, why uh, well, did you switch uh, the brushes? Yeah, I understand. Um, well, uh, I used actually uh, uh, to start with with the artificial. I do it actually to show you what are the possibilities. So, this is the artificial hair. Uh, which is kind of nylon, uh, and what I use uh, with the bright colors, I use, I, I, I prefer the sable hair brush. Yeah, I change that because one brush has red and the other one has green. If you are going to mix that together, you get this ugly brownish color, you don't want that. And you want these bright colors on your paper. So what you have to look out for is that you don't use green in your red, because before you know, your palette 
is like a muddy, muddy uh, thing. So that's why I use different brushes. Different brushes. Thank you very much. You're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. Good. Um, now we continue with the handle of the knife. And I take for that the red brush, what I use, because that is not such a point. And the other part of my palette, you see, it is. In, uh, I can use both sides, so that's nice. I can, uh, here I can make big patches of uh, color if I use it, like the red. I use a lot of that. Uh, and for smaller colors, I can use this part of the palette. But you can all also have this other plastic with the holes in it. Yeah. So uh, it depends what you prefer. Good. So I have already this bluish gray there. So I'm going to bring in some dark brownish color. It is blackish, so I can put a little bit of paint gray I add to it. Have a look. Because you should not paint with black. You don't paint with white if you make a proper watercolor, but you don't use black because black is very opaque and that gives ugly combinations with your color. So you are going to build up your blackish color with, for instance, deep blue and deep brown. Uh, that's the usual way. And then you have a colorful blackish color. Okay, take your napkin, your tissue, and we are going to bring in a dark part, the handle, and spare out your red. Like this. As long as it's wet, you can play around a little bit to get the edges right. But after a while, you should stop because if it's getting half dry and you continue, then you get these star like things in your watercolor. And uh, you don't always want that. So, so I, now I painted almost every part. I can use the same color a little bit in the darkish parts of the painting which I already did with uh, the blue, but still uh, can make it slightly stronger. That is the shade underneath in the plate, for instance, I can make it slightly darker. So because you, what you have to do is that you create a kind of relief, a relief that means that you show it's plastic, plasticity. Yeah? What you see are three dimensional things, and you see that by uh, light and shade. Yeah? That's an important thing, light and shade, because that makes the world understandable. If there's only light, you don't see anything. If there's only shade, you can't see anything. So it's by the grace of the light and therefore the shade that you see the world which you see around you. So important is that you keep that in mind, that you always try to give relief to your painting. Now, is there any other part I should use for uh, a darkish color? I can go over it a little bit. Uh, here I see that the button of the lemon can have some dark thing. And of course, don't forget the stem of the apple. You can lean on the paper, but it's always tricky because if it's wet, that's not nice, but sometimes you have to, if it's, especially if it is such a thin thing. And it goes deep down. And then I take my green brush. 
into the depth because yeah, also there you show that the stem of the apple goes into the apple. You see? So that's why I used first brown, it sticks out against the red, and then a little bit of green into the hole of the apple where the stem is growing from. So that's a dark part of it. I can do a little bit more in this part. Not everything has colors, of course. You have you speak about grays in the if you speak about gray, everybody thinks about ash gray. Yeah? When you tip off your cigarette, this ash gray. A painter, when he talks about grays, he means warm and cool grays. So most of the things around you are built up from grayish colors, you can say, with a couple of bright colors. So the grays in your work are an important thing. It's also in oil paint, but also in watercolor. So not everything has to have color, otherwise it becomes a kind of color chart where you can choose for your wall or your door which color you want to use. So that's not what you want. So the grays are important just to bring in what you need. Now, and then let's have with the same color, a bit brownish, a little bit of fun by putting in the pits. Here and there where we saw them. Priyanka did it already, as I saw. She couldn't wait. But details are always important to do that when you get to the end, not to start with. You see little dots of dark brownish blackish, that's enough to show. Also here we have a couple of them. Sometimes they are halfway into and half uh, you see them. If it's too dark, you can always do this. But it always will dry lighter with watercolor. So sometimes, you're, oh, it's too dark. But uh, in the end, it will dry up quite light. So don't be afraid. also invent if you think well it would be nice to have an extra pit here it makes it more playful well just do that I mean it's just a piece of melon oh okay now you see it's coming more into being then I see that my um, shade underneath is still a bit soft a bit uh, weak so I want to make something of that so I Partly use a little bit of bluish brown. I have that already on my palette, so I go for a little bit of bluish. If you have the wrong color, just take it off with your brush, clean it again, and then take the color you need. Okay, there we go. And then you can lose a little bit your paper. tissue to make it softer at the edges. You see, a little bit of playfulness is very important. Also underneath the plate, it's darker. You see what I do? I start with the point 
and then slowly I push the brush a little bit more and more so I get more to the belly of the brush. And then you can go from very thin to slightly thicker. This is the result, as you probably can see. Go, good. Some take some, if you have a lot of water, it takes some more time because we are sitting inside. That's why I explained in the beginning, I rather take my watercolor outside because you can continue much faster than when you are inside. It's a little bit it's more cooler and more damper. Good. So we have uh, a lot of things now. Now we have to, the big parts are painted. There's only here some uh, bluish, uh, some bluish, nice bluish, uh, what do you say, decoration. Now let's try to do something with it by bright blue. And that's always tricky because it is a ellipse and you know, Ellipses are always a trouble. Then you get into perspective, which is always, for a lot of people, a problem. Now you have this dark blue, can you see it? it's becoming more and more colorful. I put in the blue, I have the red, the yellow, the green. Uh, so all parts are uh, being painted because the background is white. We don't have to do anything with that. And that is uh, fortunate because if you sit outside and you have a sky, a blue sky with clouds, it's very beautiful, of course, and also very nice if you can paint it, but that's quite more difficult because you have to get the right blue and you have to immediately spare out the white of the clouds. So we don't have that, but that is you can say if you are more advanced in watercoloring, that is something to try out, just to do a sky with, uh, with uh, clouds and to spare out those clouds. When it's sharp, when it's a little bit blurred underneath, it's often more grayish. Now, these kind of things is a very good exercise to, to practice your skill of watercolor. Good. Well, I think it's time to make more red. That uh, Priyanka will be very happy if I do that. She did it already, but she's very advanced. You can see that she dares to put in immediately the right color. And I'm a bit slow, so I do that later. So I take again the, the red I already had, and I put in a little bit more warm red because you have cool colors and you have warm colors. So. You have a warm red, which is more orange-like, and you have a cool red, which is more like Madder Lake. That is a name for a, a more pinkish, reddish color. Okay, I start with the darker part, so I go over this part again. Just playfully, because there's also still pink there. It's not about over everything. But there where you think, hey, that's what I see, there it is. Also this part, I hope you can see it. I will show you when I'm ready because otherwise the, the color will drip down and then we have a problem. We don't want that. What does I use at least? There's nothing to do or Improvising, just improvising. You keep your, your subject in front of you, you look every time, but you also have to dare to improvise. I mean, it's not what I said, a house with a perspective rule, it's just a piece of melon. Now you see, it's getting more to the right color.
And don't forget, underneath is also a part. Slightly stronger color because it was not completely as it should be. Always try out what you have there, slightly too, too much. And then you bring in around back to it, you think, well, perhaps it's nicer if I put a little bit more strong color there. So here, uh, stronger parts, you can do it. When it's still wet, it will, because it's the same color, you, it will get into each other. And when it's too strong, as you know, slightly with your tissue, so that it will be in balance with all the other parts. That is important, balance. Balance is a very important thing in art. Before you know, you get a cacophony of colors, which is not really the thing you want. So you use your brush, but you see that I use um, my tissue also as a kind of brush, you know, I bring it on and then I take it a little bit away and then let it slowly dry. Of course, there comes a moment, and that I'm in to that now, is that you have to start improvising. And it is the, 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 you have to look and you have to, yeah, you have to get a feeling what, where it needs more or less. That's not what you can explain. That is the, the magic of art. That you will understand what is necessary. And that's also experience. I mean, when I started to do watercolor in my, uh, in my college time, uh, I also had to find out all kinds of things and it didn't all work out as I wanted. So what I had to do every time, yeah, try again, try again to get it, to get the hang of it. And that is a difficult part of it because, yeah, you are, you get frustrated. You say, my God, why doesn't it go as I want it? Yeah, that is the trick of the technique. And it takes time to understand the trick. That doesn't say that it is just a simple, ordinary trick. That's not what I mean. The trick is that you understand what you need to do. Dare to do. Because watercolor is not for weak-hearted people. It is like the nerves in, into your throat every time uh, to get it right. Should be a little bit blurred here, otherwise you get these strong lines. You don't want them everywhere. Now, so I did now board. As you, as you can see, just played around a little bit in the uh, in the uh, melon, the red part. I can just continue still a little bit on top here. Oh. Guys, you have to still see it, so I have to put it like this. It's not the way I paint when I'm in nature, but uh, it is, of course, all about instruction now today and not about great art. Good. Sometimes you can use your finger. You should not do your toe, but your finger you can use. Good. Okay. Uh, what's next? Let's keep on. I 
I should say now again the yellow of the um, lemon. Uh, what brush do I have for that? No, I take the red one because I made it slightly more orange yellow to get rid of this greenish. So I do a little bit of orange I put to it and I go round the edges. Round the edges. Be careful for your sparing out gleam lights. That's nice and yellowish, that's what we want. And we take oak again, the reflection of that. And at the same time, we can make this slightly more bright on the skin of the melon. Good. Now we are getting somewhere. with this gray brown into the other part because it's going into the depth so that's important to give it uh, also that dark grayish color which are, it's not really color as I told you before but let's do and blur it a little bit and you can say that shades are uh, yeah, what you can say, a bit of dirty color because the color is in the light and the shade is always more in a gray manner. And it only depends the reflection, but also what you prefer as a painter. So now you see I'm playing around a little bit just to get the right depth in my Painting. Okay, I'm going now to do a little bit more on my apple. You see, I'm putting in depths of, of watercolor so that it becomes stronger. And now I'm going to my green apple. That is completely different color, of course. I need the green brush. Do I have that somewhere? This is yellow. I can use that too. This blue. Oh, I can use both. Okay, I go back to this part because it's soft. Uh, Martin, yeah. I yes. would like to. Uh, since it's uh, almost one and a half hour, we're just four minutes behind one and a half hour. Uh, yeah. I would check a few things. Firstly, uh, how long do you think it would take to finish the whole painting? <laughs> yeah, that depends. Um, it is, it's always a big question, when do you finish a painting? I mean, that, 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 it has to do <laughs> with if, if it is what you see, but also what you uh, start off to make. So it's getting there now, but I still, I think I will have to continue for another hour just to finish it completely. Uh, and that's not necessary to do that in the lesson because what I showed you as much as possible is how you use your color, your total value and the brightness and, and the grayness of the color to get a relief space-like situation of the real thing. Uh, and then what I said at the last moment, you have to improvise. And you see that I become quiet because I have to concentrate myself. I have to see what is happening, which color shall I use. It's not a kind of recipe, it's not a cooking book. Uh, it's every time, what do you think you need to, to get that right? Uh, is the color bright enough? Are the, is, is, are the shades deep enough? And do I still have my light parts? So that is 
take some time. Sometimes I do nothing. I sit just for half an hour looking. And then I say, I'm fed up. And that's a, a right moment to stop. If you say, I'm fed up, I'm hungry, or it starts to rain. All right. I, I actually, honestly, there's so much uh, that we learned from this session. At least I did. And in fact, while you were talking, you were uh, doing the session and on the side of moderating, I was also painting. Uh, like actually, I started painting only like 15 minutes before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you did the, the shady parts. You did also already the yeah. pinkish part and the green. So it's a good start. Excellent. Yeah. So I would just quickly want to ask our uh, user, uh, like attendees, if someone wants to uh, say something, uh, or you know, you have a chance now, or if you want to ask any question, uh, I think as Martin say, if because if he would like to. Uh, make it bring it to the perfection as he would want and it takes time to build it upon uh, so we could end the session after uh, taking these questions and however once Martin finishes we'll still share uh, you know the final work with all of you uh, besides the recording that we would share of the session so far um, so if anyone uh, is what do you think Martin is that good for you? That is fine, okay. Uh, I can just finish it later and I can send you the results. Uh, for instance, you can show uh, the people afterwards uh, how far I went uh, because perhaps some of the people just